Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Okay. Okay. Here's what I want to share with you. Stop complaining. So I had to let you see how I let that one sit for a second. Stop complaining. Do you realize, without us even thinking about it oftentimes, we just complain about stuff. And it it comes up in such subtle forms. Man, I don't know why they still letting that lady work there, man. They don't fire this woman, man. I don't know what I'm going to do. She drives me crazy. She always got something to say. I bet today, though, the way I'm feeling right now, I bet she better not say nothing to me today. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because they it. Today it. I'm sick of her. Running her mouth. Last time she said something to me. I should have said something to her. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just giving you a small example of how it starts to snowball once you start to complain. It's, it just carries over into so many things, man. Stop complaining about your car. Stop complaining about your bus pass. Stop complaining about your kids. Can't seem to get it together. Stop complaining about your man. Can't seem to get it together. Stop complaining. Stop. Have you noticed? I'm just asking. Have you noticed? that in all of your complaining, it has provided not one solution. The reason I'm telling you to stop complaining, because God is able, because God is capable, he is capable and able of fixing anything, capable and able of curing anything, capable and able of allowing you to get to adjusting to things and capable and able to strengthen you to get through and change anything. But the key here is God is capable and God is able. A lot of times I find myself complaining because I have not used my greatest asset. And that's my relationship with God. You all have one. Now, you may not have nurtured it, but you have one because God created you as your as his child. He's available to you. Now, the fact that you ain't went to him, okay, once again, who fault is that? Stop complaining. Until you strengthen your relationship with God and formulate this relationship, you don't have enough weapons. You ain't got a big enough shield to fight this thing called life. It just keeps coming, man. And unless you develop a relationship with God, you need a partner in all of this. Maybe you got another route you're going to take. But every successful person I know personally has a relationship with God. I have some really, really some people that's kind of up there in the success term in terms of business and money and, and, and statute. I'm just talking about that portion of success. And then I have a lot of people who are very successful in, the, in their spiritual life, who, are, who have become great men of God, and women of God. And, but I look at all of them and all of them have substantial amounts of, you know, uh, possessions and things like that also. Most successful people I know have that. Uh, even if you saw them never with a big lot of house and a lot of money or stuff like that, they had so much respect, so much love, so much power was given them from people that their life, life was rich in that area. You know, like a Martin Luther King or something like that or a Gandhi or somebody who, 
lived their life in service or Nelson Mandela who came out and just, man, people put stuff at their feet because of their service. So all successful people I know have that. Every last one of these people that I know, they have a relationship with God. They used the tool that was available to them to give them the strength, the bullets, the arrows, the slings, the shield, to fight this thing called life and have the most valuable partner right there by their side, their Heavenly Father God, because he will help you get through this thing called life, man. Stop complaining all the time. It's not fixing anything. Why don't you do yourself a favor and strengthen your relationship with God? Man, why can I never get over? Well, you have not because you ask not. Man, how come I always got problems? Well, you keep trying to solve them yourself and taking them to your friends. You keep trying to do them with your own thought process. Who are you? I keep telling you, man. You're going through stuff you ain't got no business going through. And and if it's you going through something over and over and over and over and the same problem keep coming back to bite you again, all that's saying is you still ain't strengthening your relationship with God. It's your relationship. He's not going to make you have one with him. He is a perfect gentleman. He only comes into your life when you invite him in. But for those who do invite him in, they have a distinct advantage on their road to success. A distinct advantage. You can do it without him. Trust me, you can. How far you get, I can't promise you nothing. How well you handle it when you arrive there, I can't promise you nothing. How long you going to stay there, I can't promise you nothing. How difficult it's going to be without him, I can't give you that. It's going to be far more difficult. But you can, something can happen and you, you know, receive a measure of success and you think it's you and it's this move you made and you can describe it as I got lucky. I happened to be in the right place at the right time. I got lucky. Lucky is usually how other people describe other people's success. Boy, he was lucky. He was right there. Well, let me tell you what luck is. Luck is when hard work bumps up into opportunity. If you've been working hard at something, an opportunity presents itself, that comes a match. That's not luck. But now, if you haven't done that on a repetitive enough basis, that opportunity could present itself one time. You got to reconnect. Stop complaining, man. Come on, listen to me. Stop complaining. It hasn't fixed a single thing in your life. And if you're a chronic complainer, it's because you really, really have not fixed your relationship with God. He'll smooth it out for you. That I can tell you for a fact. I know that for a fact. He smoothed mine out. All right, let's go. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You feel me? Because I feel you. It's great to be alive. I don't know if you look at it that way, but I do. Every day I wake up is a gift, a blessing, an honor, and I try to make every day count. I try to be better than I was the day before. I don't always accomplish that, but that is the goal I set out to do. I have accomplished it on many times and many occasions. Today, I think I'm on track, though. I'm going to be better than I was yesterday. I'm going to be a little bit more prayerful than I was yesterday. I'm going to be a little bit more trusting of him as I was yesterday. So that right there alone, and I'm going to be more prayerful than I was yesterday. I'm on, I'm on point. I'm yeah. on point. I was already, I already, my day already started better than the one yesterday because I decided I wasn't going to let, the, look, the thing about the devil is he can't, he can't get me long. He get me now. He get he get me. You know, I'm human. He get mm-hmm. me. But he only get me for a little bit. I gathers myself. Yeah. Yeah. I have a weapon that I can use that works all the time. And it's available for you. It's called prayer. Try it. Junior, what's on your mind? <laughs> Uncle, let me ask you something. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You 65 still in the gym. I'm 43 still in the gym. I'm, I'm tired of this. What, what's your goal for your body? Because I'm about to give up on mine. I don't even want to be fine. No I'm tired of this. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Excuse me. Back up a little bit. You don't want to be fine no more. No more, Uncle. I can't keep it up. Well, in you've accomplished that. <laughs> so now, let's see. Goals. <laughs> yeah. See. I, you, I don't want to do. Yeah. If you don't want to be fine no more, I love, let me just help you out. You're there. 
<laughs> You're there. Now, do you want to reset some gold? <laughs> See, for me, Junior, You're crazy. is I'm praying for a life of longevity. Amen. So in that prayer, I also, and I believe he'll give it to me too, but faith without works is dead. So now, mm-hmm. you can ask God for longevity, But if you're not going to participate with the work part of it, if you're not going to go to the gym, if you're not going to watch what you eat, and I'm not saying you got to eat perfect, but 80-20. You know, 80% of the time, you got to put the right stuff in your mouth. 20% of the time, you can go and have yourself some cake. Go and get yourself some pie. Go on down there and get yourself a donut. Because when the light on at Krispy Kreme, I don't care who you are. (laughs) <laughs> it's hard to go past that light. The light it on. Is. It really is. I can't tell you how many times that light didn't act. I, when the light came on, I thought it said Steve. <laughs> I ain't lying, dog. <laughs> So, Steve. <laughs> he said, what up? Man, Steve. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm thinking, man, that if you're going to ask God for something in faith, you got to be willing to do the work. I understand. I was up this morning before radio. I did 10, 12-second sprints on my air bike this morning. I felt like throwing up. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. (laughs) Great question, Junior. Great answer, too, Steve. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, run that prank back with the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Valentine's Day, Shirley. Valentine's Day. This right here is Valentine's Day gift card. Valentine's Day gift card. Cat dog, if you would. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Bryce. Yeah, that's Bryce. Hey, Bryce, how you doing, man? My name is Alvin, bro. How you doing today? I'm good, man. What's up? Hey, listen. Um, I know you 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 married to Trisha, uh, to Trisha, right? To Trish, yeah. Well, uh, who who's this? Okay, like I said, yeah. My name is Alvin, and uh, I'm just trying to make sure I got the right person, man. Because you um you half black, half white, right? From what I understand. Yeah, I'm half black. Who who the f- is this? What, why why are you asking me questions? What's going on? Is she okay? What's no, no, no. Everything's cool, man. Everything's cool. Um, uh, Trish. So check this out, man. Okay, well, listen, just say what I, you gotta say. I'm at work, man. Say what you need to say. What's happening? Okay. Listen, I actually dently I sent I sent Trisha some flowers for Valentine's. They're gonna get there on Friday. But I accidentally put a, you know, the, I ordered a gift card along with it, and they got they put this gift card in Trisha's gift bag. And really that's that gift card should really be for my wife. And I was trying to see oh. if maybe if you get to the gift bag before, maybe you could get it out for me so I could get that gift card. Okay, so you said uh, you said my wife flowers for Valentine's Day, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but, yeah, but that, that that's not the key. The key is is that my uh, it's a gift card in there that I need, you know. Oh, so and that's you accidentally I... sent a gift card to my wife. You just wanted the flowers to go to her. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I sent the oh, flowers, man. Yeah, no problem. No, yeah, no, that's cool, man. I'm so this happens. We make mistakes all the time. How about this? How about you come on over, and I will be more than happy to uh, give you the gift card because I'm sure, you know, if you send it with the flowers, I'll I'll just have to hand those the, the gift card over to you and a, and probably a nice uh, f-ing ass beating too, you stupid mother. Why in the f- would you ever call me about this? Sh-? Hey man, I, and I expe- I didn't expect all this What's hostility. Your name, Alvin? Is it Alvin? My oh, name is Alvin. But I- hostility. Okay. Hey bro, all I'm trying to do is like hey, I say, I sent a. I ain't your f-ing bro. What okay. do you mean you didn't, want, you didn't think there's going to be hostile? You send my f***ing white flowers, mother How do you even know my wife? How do you know Trish? How do you know Trish? I, I, work, in, I work in the building with, that Trish works in. So oh, you work with her? Okay, good. Are you, I don't are work, you I don't work with her. her. I don't work for her company at all. But my, my, you know, my floor is on a different floor. I work in a different company. But she works, she works in the same building. So, yeah. Dude, I'm just trying to get the gift card, man. I ain't even trying to trip, dude. I ain't. So, uh, let me... So you sent some flowers. When, when the flowers going to be here? What time are the flowers supposed to be here? The flowers getting there sometime Friday. I mean, on, on Valentine's. Friday. Yeah. On Valentine's Day. Okay, good, good. So how about you come down here on Friday, okay? And uh, I will give the flowers to Trish, and I will give you the gift card, 
And you mentioned uh, if I was half black or half white. And I'm, I'll go ahead and let you know uh, that both sides are going to beat your mother because you got to be the most ignorant mother I've ever met in my goddamn life. I don't care if you're green, blue, yellow, lavender. I don't know what the you are, but you are the dumbest piece of shit. I've ever met. You come here Friday. You come here, and your your wife will get her great gift card, and my wife will get your flowers, and everybody's gonna be happy. Hey, dude, what's what's all this about, man? Okay, so have you gone out with Trish? Are you guys want for lunch, or you know, maybe a movie, or I mean, yeah. how much how much time have you spent with my wife? I I ain't I ain't I ain't spent no time with her. Why are you stuttering now? What do you mean you ain't spent no time with her? How you you seem to know all about her? You haven't gone out one time with my wife. No, I never went out with her. So you just have a crush on my wife? Is that what you're trying to say? And you, you just accidentally sent some bullshit to her? Is that what's going I on? Didn't right acci- I didn't accidentally send the flowers. I sent them because I wanted her to have. She's a pretty, oh, yeah. she's a pretty lady. I wanted her to have the flowers. Oh, okay. but, I didn't want her to, but I didn't want her to have my wife's gift card, though. What did you think I was going to be? There? How did you think, how did it in your fucking crazy bullshit mind, did you think this, this was going to be okay? What if I called you right now and be like, hey, I sent your wife a fucking uh, Can you send it back to me? Like, how would you feel if I did the same shit to you? Well, I mean, you're talking about something different from flowers, and that seems that, that sounds like a little bit offensive, don't you think? Oh, oh, that's offensive. Yeah, man. You know, I'm sorry. Albert, you're... Is it Albert? Alvin, it's not Albert. It's name, Alvin. Man. No, it's Alvin, man. It's Alvin. I don't give a shit what it is. Alvin, come see me on Friday. I'm going to have you gift card. I'm super excited to meet you. This is... This is going to be the best Valentine's Day of my f***ing life. Come visit me. You sent the flowers to the house, right? I got the address that Tommy gave me. Who the f*** is Tommy? He the one gave me the address. He, he the one told me. And Tommy come? How about you and Tommy come over to the house? It's gonna, we'll, have a, we'll have a f***ing guy's night. I'll, I'll put on a game. We're going to have some pretzels. Why don't you both come over here? Okay. But why, 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 why all the hostility when somebody's showing your wife some Whoa, love, dude? Man, no, there's no hostility whatsoever. Did you, did you hear hostility? I just invited you and your boy Tommy to come to my house. That's not hostile. I'm being hospitable. That's what it is. It's hospitable. Come see me. Uh, come see me. Okay. So let me ask you something, man. Don't you take, don't you drop Trish off to work every morning? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Now, like when y'all, when y'all riding to work, Ain't y'all listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show? This is not the Steve Harvey Morning Show. (laughs) This is nephew Tommy, baby. Come on, Bryce. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife, Trish, got me to prank phone call you. Home run, baby. Oh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) There's no way. (laughs) Oh, now I'm back. I'm pissed at her again. And now I'm going through so many emotions right now. I'm like, who could be this? <laughs> oh, oh man, I am boiling. <laughs> Holy sh! Oh, she's gonna pay for this one. Uh, you got to tell me, uh, Bryce, what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land? The mother. Steve Harvey show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my duty here. My stupid is done. <laughs> we cussed you out. Okay. <laughs> Coming That's up next, <laughs> it is Ask the CLO. Ask the CLO with our Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Carla and I, uh, we're going to have our Galentine's Day happy hour, guys, sponsored by Seagram's later on today. We're going to tell you all about it. All right, how to join us. Galentine's. Galentine's. It's when the ladies get together. Yes. Oh, gal. Oh, gals. Oh, I thought it was like y'all was going to be drinking a gallon. I, that's what I thought. Oh, a gallon I was gonna of say a gallon of secrets. Ooh, I want to be at that part. We'd be Y'all lit for, be real, nice. for real. <laughs> so we'll tell you how to join us and all of that coming up. But right now, it is time for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey, in the building. Here we go. London in Alabama writes I'm dating a man that is clean cut and he's always nicely dressed, but his house is a disgusting mess. He's mm. got dirty everything from dishes to laundry. I don't know how he manages to put himself together so nicely, but he does. 
I want the man, but not the mess. So how do I sternly let him know <laughs> it's me or the mess? And what do I do if he asks me to help him clean up? <laughs> well, see, right there. See, sternly. You want to be stern with a person, but you're not willing to help a person. Now, I don't understand your position. The dude, that's his flaw. He don't, he don't, house, he ain't a good housekeeper. I ain't a good housekeeper. So, you know, when you go to this man and you start, it's either that or me. Wait a minute, hold up, hold, hold up. How you get over there so fast? So you either clean your house up or it's me. And then suppose he asks you to help. Well, you you know, maybe the dude ain't never been made to clean up. Maybe he don't even really know how to clean up. Maybe it just ain't his thing. You know, what 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 type of relationship you gonna be in where you don't wanna help the man do nothing? You just wanna come over there and it's spotless. Oh, you you ain't gonna okay. Whatever. He nasty. You mad? Yeah, sorry. He nasty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got he got <laughs> yeah, 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 he yeah, I mean, you, you know, he don't keep a clean house. So a lot of dudes don't know how to do all that. Aww. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. I'm Aww. telling you right now. You can thank the Lord I got a little bit of extra to pay somebody because I, I promise you, I'm Your not going to do it. But oh, you man. come out the house fly, though. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Clean as hell, you know, but all uh, little Mr. Good. Spick and Span on the Zoom down here. I'm just trifling. I, yeah, I got to clean my house, take these three damn showers a day. Your rich behind going to go to hand gonna pick up your clothes out the floor. That's what you're going to do. I'm no, sorry. I'm not. Yes, you are. You're going to pick your stuff up and take it to the laundry room like everybody else. Your rich ass going to do what room. everybody else doing. You, yeah, yeah, laundry room. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't even know, know where that is at? in the house. I'm not you going just got, down there. What is you doing? <laughs> he just got rich. Hey, dog, listen to me, man. My wife everybody. ain't even in town right now. I don't, I'm not picking up a damn thing. Please <laughs> understand that. She took her ass out of town. I'm free to be me. I'm telling you right now, up at that house right now, there's some stuff in the flow. Bleed on <laughs> Before she get back, you better have that stuff picked up. I bet you I know who better have it picked up. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I bet it ain't going to be me. All right, yeah. moving on to Shay. Uh, Shay says, next month I turn 30. 30 years old, and I w- want to get a tattoo of my son's name on my back. My husband said the tattoo needs to be his name or I don't need to get one. I told him we might not be together forever, and he got mad and told me I could leave now. Did he mean this deep down, or did he say it because he's mad? (laughs) Well, lady, lady, you put a tattoo on your back of your son's name. Your husband is back there handling business. (laughs) Now, the last thing he want to see is his little baby, your baby name on his back. Lil Junior, Demetrius, <laughs> Lil Dante. <laughs> no, that ain't the time. It's your husband spends too much time behind you to be reading a name that ain't his. It don't make no sense. Now awful. get the baby tattoo somewhere for you can see it and then why would you put the baby name on the back you can't even see it right and why would she say they may not be together forever that was just and so he said Lee now (laughs) yeah (laughs) since we ain't gonna be together now right but I'm not finna be looking at Junior every time I'm (laughs) not that's not finna happen (laughs) all right Vanetta out of Queen says um Terrell the second we're not doing that (laughs) Uh, Vernetta from uh, Queen says, I'm retired and I moved in with my daughter. She thinks I'm the live-in nanny and maid, so it's cutting into my social life with my church members. I think she wants me here to save money on child care and housekeeping. I'm not that kind of grandmother. How do I handle this without disappointing her? Well, what you move in for? Mm. Huh? Not to do all of that, not she to... said. Okay, okay. Well, what did she move in for? She didn't say. To save money. Well, and grandma ought to know by now, ain't nothing in life free. Mm-hmm. You up in here eating, frying all this chicken and all this stuff in here. Well, what you think this costs? Cutting so on lights and stuff? Yeah. Keep the kids and clean up? What? What? You thought you just finna move in here? We back to cleaning up again. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we're not finna have prayer <laughs> service in here every Tuesday. We're not finna do that. Y'all need to Zoom. 
Because it's COVID. <laughs> I am sick ass yeah. old people up in my house. <laughs> Miss Vanetta needs to get her own spot. Sitting huh? up in here, them old people coming to your house. They got on prayer cloths and masks. You don't know who at your house. <laughs> Sitting up in here, all these church fans and everything. Got these gloves on. These, these thick ass cinnamon stockings and these they are nursing shoes. <laughs> Deacon got on rock ports and he can't see. Yeah. He need help up the steps. Not nothing to do this. No. So yeah, yeah, you gonna have to pitch in. Now, if you wanted to have a social life, why'd you just stay where you was? Yeah, I think she needs to move on. She's got to do all yeah. of that. Okay. Moving on to Selena CLO in Lexington. Selena says, I'm a 27 year old. I'm 27 years old, dating a 58 year old man, and he's got a snoring problem. I want to cover his face with a pillow most nights, but I don't want to kill him. Uh, is this an old man thing, or does he have a problem? I really like him, so please help. Well, let me explain something to you. Snoring? Mm-hmm. You just uncovered that problem. Oh, there's more. You, you, girl, 58. <laughs> Let me just go down a couple of things you're going to have to start it. looking out for. Oh, no. Snoring. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got some strange eating habits. Mm. He like might chew, chew with his mouth open. I, You know, I don't know what time, but, you know, it could, you know he can start peeing on himself after a while. <gasps> you know, I'm just giving you some stuff you oh. need to look out for. Uh, oh, no. You know, it's some stuff that, you know, all them pills, he going to start doubling up on the dosage on these pills and everything. He got a lot of stuff. Don't even worry about that damn snowing, girl. You got a whole lot of stuff. You got to be filling out Medicare paperwork and all this here. You got to get this AARP stuff sent in on time. And you sitting here worrying about some damn snowing. Girl, all right, this please. one is for the ladies. You got to find out when that medevac van comes in. Carla and I are inviting you to a very happy hour today. All right, thank Facebook you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment right, news Shirley, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. That's it, Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So get your girlfriends. This is not just any happy hour celebration. It's the Seagram's Galentine's Day happy hour. Carla and I will be enjoying our favorite Seagram's cocktail. Thank you very much, and cheers. When right. is it? Today. today. What time? Tell 4 them, p.m. <laughs> 4 p.m. Eastern. That's what I got to find. Today? Yes, today. At 4 p.m. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Eastern. Yes, sir. On Facebook. Yes. Live. So please yes. Live. join us. Mm-hmm. Join can us. Can guys come? We can come too? Yes, of course. Yes. Of course okay. you can. Yes. So how do, well, how do we get on there, though? Join us on our Steve Harvey FM Facebook page. It is going to be live. It's at 4 p.m. Eastern. So all you have to do is get on our Steve Harvey FM Facebook page live, okay? We'll be there waiting on you to check I gotta in. Find, I got to find that on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so simple. All these you it it's so simple. Go <laughs> so to Steve Harvey <laughs> FM on Facebook. You're going to see the live button. Click yes. it. And Shirley and I are coming in hot, baby. Yeah. <laughs> coming in hot. Cheers. Cheers. What y'all going to be doing? Drinking and talking. Yeah. Shirley. <laughs> Like we do at happy hours. Yes. Oh, Carla going to be drinking and talking. You Shirley just talk to uh-uh, Don't put that Shirley, all on me. Shirley we're sipping, be sipping happiness, Steve. Sipping we're sipping speaking. happiness. That's right. Yes, Thank you for happiness. Carla. Yes, Steve. Yes. Drink Shirley's drink for her. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, don't let her. Mm-mm. We've seen this movie before. Yeah. <laughs> that movie, that different. And it's fun. It's fun. That movie, all right. different. So yeah, inviting we every, we're, we're inviting everyone, please come toast with Carl and I at our Galentine's Day event, sponsored by Seagram. Sip happiness. Yes. And we're fun. celebrating ladies. Just mm-hmm, talking about, mm-hmm. la- you know, ladies talk, things going on, being a mom, yeah. being a wife, being a single woman, what's going on in life, what's happening on your job, pandemic, Everything. how you juggling it all. Yeah. Honey, we got time for you today. Yeah. And we're going to talk about you guys. Pandemic. We're, we're going to talk about you guys, too, especially you, Steve. Yeah. Wait a minute, Tommy. What's now. the subject you want us to talk about? Sex during the pandemic. <laughs> Will you call in and talk about that? Good or bad? Has okay. it just gone cold? Just cold and it just, it ain't happening no more. What's happening? When I'm what in you? there and you hear a comment that pop up that say, hey, Michelle, that's me speed dating. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs>
this, won't you? That's what I'm doing. Don't don't mind me. <laughs> oh, that's another reason to join us today at 4 p.m. Yeah. on Facebook Live. Get a speed date with Junior. Steve Harvey FM. Possibly. You, you're in a hurry, Junior. Yeah. I'm on y'all. I'm on using your audience for speed dating. That's what I'm but Junior say. joined us last time, so it'll be fun, you guys. Come on and check us out. It'll be a, a whole lot of fun. So Steve Harvey FM Facebook Live at 4 p.m. Eastern, all right? And other news, uh, former Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottom is going to CNN. That's right. She is going to be a political commentator. She'll be alongside Anna Navarro and Van Jones. Uh, Bottoms, Yeah, Bottoms tweeted that she applied to work at CNN when she was a student at Florida Florida A&M. And uh, to now join the team nearly 30 years later is a reminder that a dream deferred is never a dream denied. I like that. Bottoms also currently serves as vice chair of civic engagement and voter protection for the Democratic National uh, Committee. She studied broadcast journalism at FAMU and earned her Juris Doctorate from Georgia State University. She practiced law as a prosecuting attorney, then as a magistrate judge. So congratulations. Oh, when you turn on oh, now, uh, you can okay. see. Yes. I'm still mad at them for Chris Cuomo. And, and just in time for spring and summer travel, guys, Spirit and Frontier Airlines on Monday announced this billion-dollar merger, $6.6 billion merger, a combination of low fare carriers that would create America's fifth largest no, airline. No, okay? No. Spirit and Frontier. Uh-huh. It's not a flight to, not You don't know what you, you create with this right here. So this is a hot again. mess right here. Yeah. What have you combined? <laughs> Why would you put them two together? Yes. Spirit mm-hmm. need to get bought up by somebody like Delta. Uh huh. Frontier need to get bought up by somebody like America. Okay. So they can go, <laughs> okay, listen, this is what y'all been doing. <laughs> we can't do this no more and be calling ourselves an airline. Right. Well, all these bus laws and bus rules and bus regulations, we are airplanes. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Spirit, Steve, had the highest number of passenger complaints last year. The <laughs> highest number of passenger complaints? Uh-huh. What? Yep. That's how, how, to the Department wait, 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 of Transportation. Wait, wait, wait. Now, it's been a long time for me, mm-hmm. but have you ever Commercial. walked past the Spirit Gate? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, right. the Spirit Gate have stuff at it when they uh-huh. board that ain't uh-huh. at no other gate. Like, you'll what? just see just a shoe. Just a tennis <laughs> shoe over there, but just don't know over, who it belonged to. One of the, somebody just left it. You'll see just a clothes basket <laughs> with 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 a shirt in it. You be going, what, what the hell is what? this? You be going, you'll see just like some duck duck used duct tape where it looked uh-huh. like they just ripped it off and threw it. It looked oh, like that. it looked like Burlington Coat Factory. That's what it looked like. <laughs> Oh, you be sitting up here going, yeah, man. No, <laughs> well, they're going to have like a thousand, thousand flights a day to over 145 why. destinations. So get ready. You know, ready. You know how many fights going to be on there? You know how many fights going to happen? Get ready. All right. Gonna be missing. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, Judge Steve aired last night. It's a huge hit for ABC. And uh, it's streaming on Hulu. So up next, we're going to have some questions for Judge Steve. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Judge Steve, our favorite TV show right now, aired last night, and it is a big, big hit. Excuse me. Excuse me. (laughs) Yes. It is your second favorite TV show. My second? Oh, 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 yeah. Family Feud being the first. No, no. Excuse me. Excuse me. It is your third favorite (laughs) show. What's the first Girl, one? What's the ranking? You don't say ready for love. You don't know. <laughs> Girl, you don't know the hell we finna be in up in here. Girl, if you, you you don't know the hell we finna be in. You after he really get home and think about this. Well, when we're talking about Judge Steve, I give you all the love. When we're talking about ready to love, we give Okay, I all just wanted love. to clear it up. We, just we wanted to say I didn't have nothing to do with it. Go ahead. What's the question? We split our love. Ready to love. You keep saying ready for ready. love. Uh-huh. It's ready to love. Yeah. Now you in trouble. Go ahead. Yeah. I, Judge didn't Steve. Cor- I didn't want to correct it when we yeah. was in the middle of the <laughs> show. Get it I <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, 
So, Steve, our, our, our listeners love your show, and, and they wanted some pro bono legal help, okay? Right. This one's from Donnie J. Donnie J says, I borrowed my brother's car. It broke down on me. He told me after the fact that he knew it was out of power steering fluid. He expects me to pay for the repairs. So am I liable, Judge Steve? Well, the car broke down on you. Mm -hmm. That's not your fault. Now, if you were in a car accident, that's your fault. But your brother knew that the power steering was out. He let you use the car knowingly. You mm -hmm. drove it. And then it finally collapsed. That's not on you. Sorry, bro. All right. So now, Donnie, you can be a brother just to keep peace and say, hey, man, I'll give you a little something on it. Mm -hmm. Just to keep peace for letting me use it that day. Mm -hmm. But I'm not responsible for all of it. <clears throat> okay. All right. Black folks sure know how to put something on it, don't they? <laughs> Five. <laughs> from Henrietta uh, M. Henrietta says, my ex is a heavy drinker and I let him borrow over $400 to buy alcohol over the two years we dated. And I have all the receipts. He said, I drank with him most of the time, so he's not reimbursing me. How can I get my money back from this drunk? Well, $400 <laughs> over two years, uh -huh. that ain't a lot of liquor. Now, if that's yeah. on, in addition to what he drinks, then he's not a heavy drinker. He's an alcoholic. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you did drink with him. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And so stop loaning money to drunk-ass people. <laughs> that's your advice, Judge Steve? St stop doing that. That's because your ass is a drinker, too. Let's case close. I rest, Mark. Let's stop this here. That's how you see it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Judge Steve. <laughs> Check out Judge Steve. Tuesday nights on ABC, streaming on Hulu, 8, 7 Central. Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, we'll talk to you about the Steve Harvey Morning Show, Silk Sonic Vegas Flyaway, and how to register for your chance to win an evening with Silk Sonic right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Steve Harvey Nation, we've got a new sweepstakes this week. Enter the Steve Harvey Morning Show Silk Sonic Vegas Flyaway for your chance to win an evening with Silk Sonic. That's Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack, of course, at Las Vegas' Dolby Live Theater. One lucky person and their guest will fly, uh, will receive round trip airfare to Las Vegas, two night hotel accommodations at the Park MGM, and two tickets to an evening with Silk Sonic. Enter and get rules at steveharveyfm.com. That is steveharveyfm.com for all the info. All right. So, Steve, I got to ask you speaking of concerts, yes. you've told us stories throughout mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. When you used to go to concerts and what you yeah. used to do, what what was your very first concert? And and how old were you? Your very first one, do you remember? Yeah, the very first concert was OJ's. It was illegal, but I wasn't supposed to be there. I climbed in the window at uh, Leo's Casino on 55th. You climbed in the window? Yeah, my brothers had went, and I wanted to go down there, and they wouldn't take me because I was too young. So I rolled my bike down there and climbed through the basement. And what was your impression? <laughs> well, it wasn't much of an impression because my older brother beat my ass. So <laughs> oh, okay. I was really was trying to get back out that window. <laughs> so but your was, impression is the OJ's hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my first concert. I think, let me see, the first concert I went to? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. The first one I went to. Man, I don't, I don't know the first one. Mm -hmm. I've gone to so many. Yeah. Ooh, I have been to some good ones. <laughs> LTD. Uh huh. <clears throat> Holding on. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw, I saw, I saw Holding On live. Mm -hmm. I saw LTD when they all came out with them butterfly capes. Butterfly. Cape. Butterfly, butterfly cape. capes. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't get that made though. I couldn't. I ain't had enough money for the fabric to make that one. You couldn't what the butterfly cape? Yeah, I you couldn't make the cape. I was going. Oh. Who had the best opening? What? Concerts. Earth, wind, and fire. fire. What? Yeah, you're gonna say that. Well, you know, sure. I was at Richfield Coliseum <laughs> when these TPs came up out the floor <laughs> and then uh, boom, and then the TPs disappeared and Earth, wind was standing there. <laughs> Maurice, what? Right. 
<laughs> at the top of my lungs, I was hollering like a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you'd have thought Justin Bieber was up there. I was hot. <laughs> so... Justin Bieber? <laughs> Hell yeah. Because I had a white girl be hot. That's not yeah, the concert man. that you wore the feather in your fro, is it? Is that the one? Nah, that was the second one. That was uh, that mm-hmm. was that was when they had Sun Goddess out with Ramsey Lewis. Mm-hmm. Boy, I had that feather in my throat. You couldn't tell me nothing, boy. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. I was in there matching them, boy. Quayo, but I like the fact that he didn't mind. Huh? I, I like the fact that you went to the concert fully confident with a feather in your fro. Sure. Chris. <laughs> Surely. Your gear. Yes. Your gear. Yes, I point. love that. Uh-huh. Committed yeah. with no date. Uh, oh, you, you went, went by yourself. So by no. yourself. They can't have no money for no two tickets. <laughs> but I can't miss this. Now I can't have this heifer slowing me down. Mm. Mm-hmm. Plus, I got to. I'm gonna switch seats, and she's not gonna understand that. Because See, I you're bought breaking the rule. Uh-huh. Yeah, I bought a ticket up in the rafter, <laughs> right. eleven dollar ticket. Uh-huh. But I'm going to sit down in the thirty five dollar seat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm that eleven. I'm in the dope. Huh? Mm-hmm. But I watch. I watch the opening act perform. <laughs> And I just keep my eye down there. And then when I see an opening in that chair, I ease on down. Then when the main act come out, I just come down the aisle with my costume on, you know. Yeah. And then I yeah. ease on into the seat. Like and you be been next there to already. some pimp ass dude and go, little man, what's up with you? I like that. <laughs> Boy, you clean, ain't you? Yes, sir. Thank you. And I just spit on in. Now I'm down front. Now I can't get a girl to do all that. <laughs> wow, Steve. Why well, you broke next? ass buying these cheap tickets? Because I ain't got the money. <laughs> Coming up next, it is the nephew and the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, we'll get into that in just a bit. But right now, it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. Neff, what you got for us today? The big game is Sunday, right? Big game on Sunday? Right, right. Okay. Yes. Okay, big game on Sunday. Cool. So this right here is called Super Bowl Party. Okay, or Party. (laughs) Whatever you want to look at. Super Bowl Party or Party. All right, let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Gerard. Yeah, this is him. Who's calling? Hey, this is this is Curtis, man. I'm um, uh, I'm one of your neighbors in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm about three, I think, about three streets over from you. Uh, I'm reaching out to you, man. I know the Super Bowl coming up. Are you uh, are you are you planning on throwing your your annual Super Bowl party this year? Man, how you get? You said you're in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, I live in the neighborhood. I'm 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 three streets over from you. Oh, okay. Yeah, how'd you hear about the Super Bowl party, man? I, I mean, I mean, everybody knows about it. I mean, you know, it's it's it's, it's pretty big every year. You got. You know, I mean, it's 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 cars everywhere. I mean, you guys be be rocking for uh, all through the night on Super Bowl night. So I, I'm I'm calling to see if are you are you throwing it this year? Um, yes, and you, I do it every year, man. I do it every year. All the neighbors come over, everybody comes over, we have a good time. So yeah, we're gonna be doing it again this year. Why? What's up? Okay, so here here what I want to tell you, man. Every year, your party too loud. And it's people parking all in front of other people's houses. You know, I'm, I'm three streets over. It's people parking in my driveway to get to your house. And to be honest with you, this shit is too loud. And I'm I'm just telling you this year, if that is loud this year, I'm calling the police this year. Man, this is what you really called me for? You really called uh, me to threaten me to tell me you're going to call the police to shut down my party, bro? Yeah, I mean, what kind of hate is that? Is that? Everybody is too loud, man. Man, everybody in the everybody in the neighborhood come to my party, man. No, so, ain't no everybody in the, the neighborhood problem? don't come because I damn sure ain't been there. That's because you ain't get an invite. You damn right. You, 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 you damn right. Because you a hater. Because no you a hater. That's why you ain't get no invite. You Say a what? hater. That, I said you're I, a hater. That's why I'm you not. Get no, no I ain't no hater. I'm just telling you your stuff is out of control, man. Man, you got to tone it. You got to get control of your party. You don't have control man, of it. Man, you telling me how to control my control your mouth. For starters, let's start right there. All right? You ain't calling no 
Justice League, you ain't doing none of that. We ain't doing. Oh none yeah, of yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, hold on. You ain't telling me what I'm not gonna do. All right. I just you the me. one. You the, you the one throwing the loud ass party. You the one got people parking in people's driveway. And yeah, that's right. If it happens that's this right. year, I'm calling the police. You ain't calling nobody. You ain't calling a oh. person. I'm gonna tell you okay. that right now. Okay, so, I'm so how you finna stop me? How you finna stop me from making sure I got peace at, at, on, on my street at my house? I'm gonna stop you with a size twelve right up your. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, hey, dude, I, it, I, I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you again. Control your party. Get the noise level where it ain't, it ain't disturbing I'm, everybody in the neighborhood, and stop people from parking in people's driveway. And I'm going to tell you again, I'm about to have a party with my size 12 right up in your ass. Okay. How about that? So, hey, dude, Come it, it, it is what it is then. It is what Come it is. Get it. Look for the police to be at your party. All right? Uh-uh, Case no, closed. No, uh-uh. Case closed. Look for, the people to, look for the police to be at your damn party, because evidently you don't respect your neighbors is what it is. No, I, you know what? I do respect my neighbors, because all the neighbors in the neighborhood come except for you, because we already know you're on, the, you're on that list. Yet I hate a ass neighbor that be calling tow trucks and, you know, complaining about leaves Dude, and people's you yard and all of that. You don't even know I me. know you. I know exactly who you are. That's why you never got an invite to the party, because you a hater. You do not even know me, dude. You, you have a no buster. really idea who I am. Use a buster. Use a okay. Ass buster. All right. All right. That's I'm the right. buster, but I'm gonna be the buster that's calling the popos to be over there on Sunday. Look, listen to you, 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 you snitch, snitching. S n i t c h i n. That ain't that ain't snitching. that ain't, that's not snitching. No. Yes, it is. It's controlling yes, it is. the atmosphere and stopping it from being out of control. You the are out of control. Out of control. Especially, no, let me not. ask you something. So, so you think people that's going to your party ought to be able to park in my driveway? Listen, man, I, I, I'm going to be real with you. I'm sorry if anybody may have parked in your driveway. But it ain't nothing for you to just knock on the door and say, hey, excuse me, you know, I'm trying to get out, you know, whatever, whatever. I'll make sure I put it on the, on the flyer that, we don't want people blocking driveways, but, you know, obviously it happened, and I apologize for that, but that's no reason for you to be going all extra crazy and going the extra mile talking about, I'm calling the police. You ain't calling nobody, man. Shut up. That right there is what's wrong with black people today. Instead of coming to me like a man, you coming to me like a coward. Instead of coming to me like a man and saying, listen, man, I'm coming like you know, a coward. because the first thing you're talking about, oh, I'm going to call the police. And then when the police come and beat your black ass up, you're going to be on the other line complaining, talking about, oh, no one is this, this to me. You want to be suing and doing this and that. Don't you know that's how you get f***ed up, man? So as black people, we got to learn how to stick together and come together. If you want to come to the party, it sounds like you a silent hater on the low, for real. Like, you really want to come to the party. But because you're the only person in the neighborhood that hasn't been invited, now you're talking about calling the police. I know exactly who you are. Who am I? You that dude that live up two, three streets over, and you drive that, that <laughs> truck with the flannel shirts and all of that. You're the only person in the hood driving a <laughs> truck in flannel. What's wrong with you, man? That's why you ain't getting no invite. And on top of that, all those dogs you got running around in your backyard, you need to clean them up. They'd be back there <laughs> and, and everything. And then the other neighbors can't even have barbecues because you're big, rusty-ass dogs running around. You got a nerve to be talking about you calling the police when we need to be calling the city on you. All that trash and you got in front of your house, man. Get out of here. I'm going to call the cops on you right now. If you ain't the wearing the flannel shirts and with the truck and the dogs running around with all in the front yard and the backyard and all over the place, who the are you then? Tell me. Say, say no more. I'm going to tell you who I am. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Yo just got pranked by your next door neighbor, Brian. That's who I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, now I'm definitely going to kick you in his <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> man, you had me going, man. <laughs> I hope when I run this prank, I hope the man with the <laughs> truck and the, and, the, and the flannel shirt ain't listening to it. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I got one uh, more thing. I, you got to tell me what's the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. Man, you already know it's the Steve <laughs> Harvey Morning Show. 
<laughs> you already know what it is. <laughs> you got everything in that call. A black history lesson. Man, <laughs> he's straightening you out. Black I know exactly who you are. You drive that <laughs> red pickup truck with that damn flannel shirt on. Got all them nasty ass dogs in your backyard. Damn, Dog, he nobody invite you? Yeah. All the way in. <laughs> You a hater. <laughs> you a hater, really. Oh, no, low, you a hater. <laughs> but, dog, he told you right off the Man, hey, dog, you ain't calling nobody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You ain't finna do nothing. Shut up. Nah. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> police yeah, whoop your ass. Up. What you gonna do then? Yeah, that's what he said, yeah. <laughs> See, that's what happened. You call the police, then they beat your ass. And then you, you don't know what they were doing. Me, <laughs> well, that's what I mean. always <laughs> believe that. Stop like calling them every five minutes. Yeah. They won't kill us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You really got to do something me for me to call the police. Something really got to be popping off. Man. Dog, I remember when we lived in the in the hood, my sister in law got in an argument with my brother and called the police. <laughs> the police came to my daddy's house. <laughs> That was the wrong house. That didn't go good at all. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, he didn't understand it. <laughs> wait, wait, the first thing, because he could not his only question was, who, who called, called you? Call? Right. Who, who called you and told you come here? My house. Mm-hmm. We got a call complaint that a woman said she was arguing with her. Wait, what? Boy, when he found out it was my sister-in-law that had called, his daughter-in-law called the police to his house. Man, my daddy didn't talk to her for almost four years. For how long? <laughs> About four years. Don't Whoa. grudge. <laughs> What's wrong with you? All right. Good one, nephew. Thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com by clicking Submit Strawberry Letter. Okay? And you never know. We could hear that. We could be getting your letter, and we could be reading it live on the air, just like we're going to read this one. And you just never know. It could be yours. Mm -hmm. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 52-year-old married woman, and I've been married for 21 years, and we have three teenagers at home. I'm working from home now, so I'm able to cook for the kids and be a bit more hands-on. I also have more time to see how ignorant my husband really is. He is a cheater and a very bad one. He's been busted several times, and I've overlooked it because I don't want to break up a happy home. My father is a big influencer in my life. He was a pastor for most of my life, and when he cheated on my mother, he got excommunicated from the church. I know I should not be getting marital advice from him, but he's a wise man, so I'd rather listen to him than a therapist. He's always told me to keep to myself and not to look for things, and I will have a long and happy marriage. Being in the house 90% of the time shields me from anything my husband might be doing in the streets. That's why I call him ignorant all the time. He can't even cover his tracks like a seasoned womanizer would. (laughs) I've seen inappropriate emails to his female manager, and I've seen text messages and breast pics on his phone from random women. That's his thing. He always gets several breast pics from the women he's sleeping with. It can be two or three at a time for all I care, but there's no way I should know what he's up to. Women in my family disagree with me all the time and try to tell me things about my husband. I ask them politely to stop gossiping with me because I'm not leaving this man. My dad came over the other night and confirmed what I believe. He said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. My man still makes me feel like I am the only woman for him, despite what he does behind my back. Am I a fool for letting this slide, or do I destroy my family and leave him? What a confusing situation you're in and and try to get us in, but let's see if we can help you. I I think the first thing you need to do is stop listening to your daddy. That's what I think, Um, because remember, he cheated too. He got kicked out of the church for it. Um, What he's telling you to do is what he would have wanted his wife to and your mother to do so he could keep doing what he was doing, cheating. 
That way he could cheat and keep his pastor's job at the same time. So please tell him thank you, but no, thank you. I'm good, Daddy. I'm good. I I know this is hurting you. It's confusing you. Uh, Your dad's asking you to turn a blind eye to your husband's infidelity. You're not happy. And even though you say you have a happy home, it's not happy in your home. You're miserable. Um, uh, uh, They all know about your husband, your family. You've sacrificed your happiness for 21 years listening to your dad's crazy advice. I mean, it's time you make some decisions for your own, on your on your own, about your own life, okay? Um, tell your husband you're no longer going to put up with going, to, you know, all this goings on that he has. This is crap that he's giving you. Uh, you said you're not leaving him. Are you sure? You said you're not leaving him in spite of everything that you've seen and that he's done. But you you know you don't have to take this from him, I hope. Um, yes, your marriage is very broken, and it does need fixing. So if you really want to stay in it, since you said you're not leaving, uh, it's time to let your husband know that it, he he better straighten up or he's got to go. Simple as that. Steve? I don't know how we help a person that don't <laughs> want help. Yeah. Uh, I, lady, why, why did you even write us? I mean, it's... It, you know, you said in the letter, here's the line that sticks out for me. Women in my family disagree with me all the time and then try to tell me things about my husband. I ask them politely to stop gossiping with me because I'm not leaving this man. Yeah. Okay, so what you want us to do? Yeah. You ain't leaving, stay there. <laughs> stay there. Stay there and quit complaining. That's all you got to do now. Yeah. Seem to me like in this letter, you need to learn how to lap it, lick it, and like it. Mm, three L's. One more time. Lap it, uh-huh. lick it, and like it. Mm-hmm. That's what it seems to me like. Because you don't, you're not leaving this man. She said it. All right, but now let me tell you, let me get you to this point. You 52, you've been married 21, you got three teenagers at home, and now you have more time to spend at home so you can be a bit more hands-on because you work from home now, and now you want to say, your husband, uh, only time to see how ignorant my husband really is. So you're married to an ignorant man, okay? He's a cheater and a very bad one. Now you're married to an ignorant man that's a cheater. You've busted him several times, and I've overlooked it because I don't want to break up a happy home. Who who happy in the home? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the kids might be cool because they don't know. Uh, he's certainly cool because he can get busted and you overlook it. So I'm not sure that if he's getting busted and you're overlooking it, if he's ignorant or he realized he can do what he want to do because you ain't going to do nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure that he's ignorant. I just think he realized you ain't going to do nothing. When I come back, I'll straighten it out. I ain't going to be able to help you, though, but I will Uh talk to you. (laughs) She's dying. All right, thank you, Steve. Coming up, part two of Steve's Strawberry Letter response at 23 minutes after the hour. The subject is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's crazy strawberry letter. The subject, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is the dumbest letter we've had in a while. This is just dumb. I'm 52, been married 21 years, three teenagers at home. You work for home now, so you spend a lot of more time. You're a lot more home. Uh, you're a lot more hands-on now. And you've also ha- had time to see how ignorant your husband really is. Now, this is why you say he's ignorant. He's a cheater and a very bad one. Okay. Then you say he's been busted several times, and I've overlooked it because I don't want to break up a happy home. You don't want to break up a happy home for who? Because if you're happy in that type of situation, there's nothing me and Shirley can do for you. Mm -mm. My father is a big influence in my life. He was a pastor for most of my life when he cheated on my mother and he got excommunicated from the church. I know I should not be getting marital advice from him, but he's a wise man, so I'd rather listen to him than a therapist. 
You make the most contradictory statements throughout <laughs> your damn letter. You live with a man who's ignorant and a bad cheater, and you overlook it because you don't want to break up a happy home. Your father got excommunicated for cheating on your mama, and I know I should not be getting marital advice from him, but he's a wise man, so I'd rather listen to him than a therapist. <laughs> okay. Okay, lady. And now this is what his father said. He's always told me to keep to myself and not look for things and I will have a long and happy marriage. What kind of father is this? Listen to me. He's wise, but not to your benefit. He has given you you the wisdom of a cheater. He's not giving you the wisdom you need as the person who's being cheated on. And I'm stunned that this is coming from your father. How old and backwards ass is he thinking? And this is who you'd rather talk to than a therapist? A lady. Come on now. And you 52. What you talking to his old ass for? (laughs) This old ass cheater with this old ass advice. Your, your daddy old enough to have written a hymn. Why are you listening to him? <laughs> Shut up. Keep your mouth closed. Let your man cheat in a go. Shut up. Keep your mouth closed. Let your man keep cheating on. I said shut up. And keep your mouth closed. And let your man keep cheating on. Let him cheat. Let him cheat cheat on you mm-hmm. and keep your mouth closed so you can have a happy home. Mm-hmm. Now, being in the house 90% of the time, it shields me from anything my husband might be doing in the streets. No, it don't, lady. That's why I call him ignorant all the time. He can't even cover his track like a seasoned womanizer would. I've seen inappropriate emails to his female manager. I've seen text messages and breast pics on his phone from random women. Why, why why, he need a passcode? Because if you see it, you've already said you're going to overlook it. And in a minute in the letter, you finna tell us you ain't finna leave him. So how ignorant is he? He doing it because he know you ain't going to do nothing. That's his thing. He always gets several breast pics from the women he's sleeping with. You're typing this <laughs> from your happy home? <laughs> it can right. be two or three at a time for all I care but there's no way I should know what he's up to it's okay that you know what he's up to because you're not going to do anything about it for two reasons because you don't want to upset your happy home and your daddy told you to stop looking for stuff Women in my family disagree with me all the time, and they try to tell me things about my husband. I ask them politely, stop gossiping with me because I am not leaving this man. Okay, now, now I got a clear picture of it. You think your husband is uh, ignorant because he cheats. He's been busted several times, and you keep overlooking it. Your daddy didn't told you to stop looking through for stuff, but you find stuff anyway. Your your uh, female relatives and told you to leave him. You've told them to stop gossiping about you and him because you're not leaving this man. Mm. My dad came over the other night. Now here come this old fool. Your dad came over the other night and confirmed what I believe. He said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. My man still makes me feel like I'm the only woman for him, despite what he does behind my back. Am I a fool for letting this slide, or do I destroy my family and leave him? Lady, listen to me. Mm. This man makes you feel like you're the only woman for him. He may make you feel like you're the only woman for him, but you ain't the only woman with him. Ooh. Now, if you done signed up for this open marriage that you're in and don't know it, I'd like to introduce you to it. You are in an open marriage. Mm -hmm. Wide open. And as far as your daddy go, listen to me, men. Please don't advise your daughters based on, advise your daughters based on mistakes you've made and let them learn from the mistakes you've made. Do not make your daughters relive 
a mistake so you can be cleared as a cheater. That's the most ignorant mess I've ever heard. It is. <laughs> Stupid All ass right. matter. Thank you, Steve. Uh, you guys can leave us your comments on today's letter on Instagram mm-hmm. at Steve Harvey FM and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, you know what time it is. It is time for Junior and Sports Talk. Junior, what you got? Okay, Shirley, but let me just let the people in Dallas know that on April Fool's Day, these fools is coming to town at Texas Trust Theater. Go get your tickets, Ticketmaster.com. Earthquake, myself, Bruce Bruce, Bill Bellamy, Ryan Davis and Shantae Wayans will be taking the stage in Dallas to just act a fool. That's because it's April Fool's Day. Might as well. Let's go ahead and get to this sports talk. The Saints hired Dennis Allen, the uh, defensive coordinator. They hired him his head coach in New Orleans with the Saints. That's that's a good move for them. Thank you. Anyway, with nothing changed and nothing changed yes. there. Okay, another 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 head coach, not black. That's okay. Got some news for y'all. Okay, <laughs> Alvin Kamara, he's been charged with 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 uh, felony battery. Okay. In a casino, got into a fight the day before the Pro Bowl. He got a court date set on March 8th. But that ain't what I'm trying to get to. I would like to just make this announcement in Black History Month that the Houston Texans have hired Lovey Smith as their head coach. We got we got a black head coach in the Houston, Texas organization. This is this is this is major. Lovey, we have now raised the head coach of the blacks in the NFL 100%. We now have to. <laughs> we up 100%. This is called Excuse progress. Junior. Huh? Junior. Yeah. The head coach that you just had was black. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. But I'm talking about this season coming up. We just all now got did, two now. All we did was replace him. That's okay. Yes. We got two now. We go next season. We got two. That's all you I know. You it was a lateral move. It That's just, all it, it was. If it's a lateral, we just moved whatever. Like we ain't made no progress, homie. Well. Uh, let me just you tell replace you. a black coach with a black coach. That ain't hiring. Perfectly no fine. We're not going in there with just one. We got two. Still next season. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Now all I know is this. Love it. Let me just tell you this. Love it. That's go on down to just line. oxtails and get your oxtail plate. I paid for it already. Just say <laughs> thank you. Uh-huh. Go on get you some oxtails over there. Just, at the lead there. Go on by the turkey leg hut. I got your front line. Yeah. I know the line long, <laughs> but you gonna yes. skip that line, love it, because you go. We need you in the city. So man, <laughs> I'm proud of that man. Now, Unc, let me ask you this, Unc. Did you see the hockey game for the women? With- now, I got full Olympic report, <laughs> but I can't take your segment from you. Yeah, okay, I'm just saying. I'm just, but whenever I'm y'all so- want the Olympic report, I got it for you today. Just let me know when you want it. <laughs> okay. Because I got right. the full Olympic report. That's what report. I asked you, I, 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 I watch all of it. <laughs> You're That's so amazing. <laughs> But I he got his music God, playing. I got it. <laughs> yeah. God, just, man, okay, I tell you please what, uh, let me do a Olympic report later I on. I got you. Okay, uh, tomorrow I'm going to let you have an Olympic report. I want I tomorrow. <laughs> you want today. <laughs> <laughs> just want to say congratulations to Lovey Smith, man. I'm proud of you, brother. Man. It's going to be a good game. I, I love feel it. Don't unpack too much. We don't know how long you're going to be in Houston. So just <laughs> walk light. Still need right. that quarterback. <laughs> Thank you, Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, men are now expected to bear it all in movie roles. And I mean everything. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, this news is a little risque, but we're going to do it anyway. The year's top performers on screen so far are surprisingly men's genitalia. All right. We finally live in the era of men being just as open and vulnerable on screen as women have been for years. Hollywood has flipped the script and will expect the men to bear it all on film. But unlike the women, the men are being offered prosthetic genitalia in all shapes and sizes to fulfill, quote unquote, their roles, okay? Page Six reports that special effects makeup artist Jason Collins had a recent request to sculpt 15 different prosthetic genitals for actors within an 18-month period. Frankly, Colin said, it's about time. For a lot of performers... Huh? They making them for him? Yeah, I ain't ain't, going to need that. I don't need all that. But listen to his explanation, though. He said, for a lot of performers, they do feel a bit more comfortable uh, in some ways wearing a prosthetic because they're not being asked to reveal their own genitalia. It's like a costume piece, and it's also part of a character. It's not you. Well, but you, you know, let's be honest, it though. You're going to need that. 
Because you when you what? get out there on them sets and it's cold, Prosthetic. once it's cold, you know, it ain't going to be the same. So, you know, unless you're going to stand here and let me heat it up, we're going to have a real problem right here. So I'm probably going to put that on, you know. So you, so if that were the yeah, case, then you most guys people would, do, would have to go in and do that. Would you, you know. guys do it? A movie with male frontal nudity? Oh, yeah, girl. I run all off that camera. What you talking about? <laughs> Tommy get nude for free. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm not ashamed of me at all. I get right there. What's what's my line? That's all I need. What is my line? <laughs> so would you feel more comfortable being yourself or would you want that prosthetic? That's I'm gonna be myself. I'm comfortable oh. with me. Well then you'll have to be on that on that screen by yourself because I'm on that screen <laughs> with you. Woo. Ain't gonna be good. <laughs> ain't gonna be good, doggy. Oh, ain't Ooh. nobody scared to stand next to you, man. Well, what I tell you, you what. Well, well, we all know who the uncle is. That's for damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Bet you that. <laughs> Bet you that. <laughs> but, but, it is interesting because women have done it for years, for yeah. years and years, and they've always shielded men. But now it's everybody, every man and woman. But you know, I think now. we, I think, you know, the way the world is turning is inevitable that it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, we we in such a mm-hmm. our country, man. I think I think America's eating itself. I think America's eating itself alive, and it's sort of sad to see it because we we're, we're so free that we're too free. I mean, we don't have any restrictions. We we don't have any restrictions, and and we lead the world in every negative category. We have the most murders. We have the most violent crimes. We have the largest prison prison system. I, I mean, in the world, no one incarcerates more people than us. Something's wrong. We have more police shootings than anybody. We have more gun violence than any country. What? We're free. We we buy we place. buy more drugs than anybody. We have more drug addicts than anybody. We have more crimes committed. Nonviolent drug related offenses than anybody. Man, something's wrong here. Something's really, really wrong here. And a part of it is we so free, we 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 freedom ourselves, we're, we're starting to eat ourselves. And that's just how I feel about it, man. And it's sad, man. We gotta back some of this down. And if we don't, this is what's gonna keep happening. Look at what's happening to our young girls. They don't have right, they don't have choices anymore. It's crazy, man. Got these guys telling these girls, you got to bring your girl with you and all this here. Got this woman on this letter talking about her man a cheater. Her daddy done told her to stay with her damn man in the strawberry letter. What kind of father you got? (laughs) All right. Okay. All right. Well, um, more trending stories. We'll talk about love next coming up at 20 minutes after the hour on the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, guys, Valentine's Day is Monday, and love is definitely in the air. In a new survey, 75% of couples said it was love at first sight when they met their significant other, and 72% said they still get butterflies when they see their partner. Wow, interesting, huh? Does that apply to anyone on the show, everybody on the show? Well, with the exception of Junior, of course, is married. We could do our own poll here. You still get well, butterflies when you see your partner? I'll tell you what. Let's start with y'all. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> Shirley, <laughs> still get butterflies? When you yeah, still get butterflies. Once, yes. You know you know what, Tommy? I get tired of just me and Tommy. You know? It comes straight at us. You guys are comedians. <laughs> nah, I don't worry about it. We still going to be that. Comedy. This ain't, that ain't a comedy yeah. question. But you make it funny, though. You make okay. it funny. Well, yeah, let's see yeah, how yeah. you make yours. Mm-hmm. All of that. Butterflies, yes. Carla, how about you? Oh, yeah, butterflies. Well, you answer yes. quick with that. Yes, yeah. that, yes, that was, butterflies. Was, I love my man. Yeah. yeah, all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All that. Carla? Yes. <laughs> what she said. Really, his mother wanted to say, like, caterpillars or something. You didn't really want the whole yeah. butterfly. Depends <laughs> on what day it is. You're right. <laughs> you know we're different. It could we're be emotional. a moth. <laughs> yes, we're mm. emotional. <laughs> it's a fly, but I wouldn't call it butter. <laughs> Dragon. That's what we're keeping it 100 scenes. Somebody get time. this mosquito. <laughs> All 
All right, coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. <laughs> yeah. Butterflies. Mm. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather skip brushing your teeth for a whole week or would you rather give your spouse an honest answer for everything for a full week? Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll be back Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> My mouth would be What'd back you together say, by Steve? Monday. Yellow teeth it is. <laughs> I'm going to be a man. funky breath. Funky breath. breath. Don't talk to me. Yeah. I'm going to just mm. go and just not brush my teeth. Feel how you want to feel about me. <laughs> you do be using no you. H's that week. <laughs> hey. <laughs> how y'all doing? <laughs> wear your mask, huh? Just wear your mask. No. Yeah, I just feel how you want to feel about me. I mean, we're not it's doing not this no for answer. a week of honest answers. Oh. No. <laughs> Uh, all right, would you rather spend a weekend in You don't want to ask me that. Huh? <laughs> you ain't going to want to ask me that. What? No, I can't. Oh, 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 because of your breath. Uh-huh. Your breath. Well, you <laughs> can't. I don't, I don't want you to ask You can't ask me. Not, I'm just telling you right now. You uh-huh. can't ask me nothing about my past. You can't ask me none of that. I'm not, it's not finna go well. Oh, man. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, would you rather spend a weekend in Wyoming with Kanye Hell yeah. Great, Hell great. yeah. Hey. 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 Everybody Hell a? yeah. Hey. I'm going with A. I got to see it. I'm going to wait. I've learned to wait. I'm A. I'm going to go with A. I don't care. Or, I would you rather, a. or would you rather spend a weekend in Florida at Mar-a-Lago with you know who? The oh, Trump Kanye. No, I'm sitting yeah. up there with Kanye. I'm sitting yeah. up with Kanye because it's going to be way more interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at least to him. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to fight, though. A week with Kanye is no way we don't come to blows. Why? It's why no you way. Why are you mad at Kanye? You at his house? Why? No, why I, you I, Kanye ain't at his house. We ain't got to stay at Kanye's house. <laughs> you go, I said you'll be at his house. You said in say Wyoming. But either way, me and Kanye going to come blows. It ain't no way. Because I've been with him before. I don't allow him to say what he want to say around me. I was the only one offering any, like, what? Like, <laughs> Oh, any clap back or... No, I um, said that like three times in one day in front... What? <laughs> it was that shocking? <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Dog, I looked around and said, ain't, ain't, I'm the only one who heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a lot of people, you just saying it just go along with what he be saying sometimes? Oh, and man. Look, I, I asked him, I said, am I the only one who heard that? A dude told me, said, Mr. Hogg, we really, we really, we really can't push back. Oh, no, no, I'm not sitting what? here like this here. No, we yeah, can't, can't push back. No I talk like I want to. I don't know who. You know. I'm not fit to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, while you with him in Wyoming, you do know he going to call Trump in Florida anyway. <laughs> so you we gonna both talk made that ignorant ass mistake, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and call him. All right. I know Thanks, what to do guys. next time I'm standing behind his ass. I bet you ain't going to watch, watch my face next time. <laughs> All right. We'll be back with the last break of the day and some closing remarks from our one and only fearless leader, Judge Steve, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. Here we are. Last break of the day. And it's mm-hmm. been a fun day. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> it always is. It's a pleasure coming to work. A blessing. Coming to work. Yeah. Amen. Being able so to do what we do. Being able yeah, to do what is. we do and love what we do. Oh. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. We got to remind everybody, too, tonight. Oh, yes, Well, this tonight. evening, 4 o'clock, happy hour. <laughs> Tell them, Shelly, girl. 4 p.m. <laughs> Eastern, please join Carla and I for our Galentine's Day live Facebook. Okay, we're going to be on Facebook Live at 4 p.m. Central. It's a sponsored 4 by Seagram. Eastern. 4 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Oh, did I say Central? 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. Eastern. That's what I meant to say. 4 p.m. Eastern Facebook Live. Steve Harvey FM Facebook. Seagram's Galentine's Day Happy Hour. <laughs> we're going to be drinking. We're going to be talking. No, no, we're going to be not. sipping. <laughs> Happiness. Carla's Thank going you, to drink your drink. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Carly, you can handle your lift. This huh? girl here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you, you gonna put iced tea in your cup? <laughs> iced tea and ginger ale. You make it. Iced tea. You bet not. <laughs> we we give me the ladies. Huh? We're gonna have some fun. Give Let's me the say, latest come. Olympic update, man. Here we are today with today's Olympic update. 
Thought really? we'd get out of here without realizing it. Folks, another fabulous day in the snow. Just to get you up to speed, uh, Michaela, the white girl that was trying to defend her title, uh, is out. She skied out. I reminded y'all. But the winner yes. of the gold medal was the last white girl down the hill. Now, the reason <laughs> I'm not saying her name is because y'all don't know these people because they're <laughs> Olympians. And they only play every four years. So even if I told you her name, your ass don't know her. And yeah. she ain't from America. So white girl come down the hill, last but not least, hungry and wins the giant gold medals racing for, for women. Wonderful uh, race right here. For yes. Downhill. Downhill. Ain't but one thing go down the hill in the Winter Olympics. If we got to say skiing, what else the hell is we talking about? <laughs> what did y'all know what he was talking about? Well, they about? wasn't surfing. Yeah. I know he was skiing. <laughs> it's the Winter Olympics. What else is your ass going down the hill on? <laughs> and plus, Angry. there are no black people in these Olympics no damn where. Just yeah. want to be clear about that. If you want to front and all, the black girl that was a speed skater, she's out in the 500. Oh. She did well, but she's out. Other than that, mm. there are no black people. The ones mm. that's from Turkey and from these Middle Eastern countries that are over here trying to represent, you know their ass ain't fitting to win because uh -huh. they ain't even got no snow. They have nowhere to practice. <laughs> they can't win. Hard, they snow. It's hard to practice in the Dubai Mall. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it is hard to practice in the Dubai Mall. Now, let me just go on and get you up to speed right here. The curling, the curling event mixed doubles was won by some more white people out of <laughs> Norway. The Italians had a shot at it, and so did the Swedes, but a couple, a married couple, won from Norway. Where is my damn music? <laughs> Thank you. Jesus. Sitting up in here, man. So now, a couple wins. For the first time ever, I saw two people tongue kissing after a victory in the Olympics because they was married. So they tongue kissed on the ice. It was very exciting. Once again, you don't know these people. Ain't no right. need of me giving you their Cur names because it's curling. Them. Most of y'all don't even know what curling is. No. All white people play curling. And you would think America would be playing at least meddling or something in curling because it's, uh -huh. it's, it's taking somebody else's puck is knocking it out the way and claiming it as yours. Ain't this how this country got built? You think we win a medal in that, but oh no. That punk ass can't play curling. Also, let's move over to the speed skating track for the 1500. The 1500 was all Asian finals. Five men qualified for the finals in the 1500. The reason I say all Asians, though, is because the two boys from Hungary were from Chinese and Hungary descent. Oh, oh wow. okay. Their mother was Chinese and their father was Hungarian. But okay. they were Hungarian nationalists, so it was five Asians skating. You really have been watching. Well, you've really been I'm watching. I'm telling you, paid attention. <laughs> if their mother had made a special flag for them, one half what? Hungary and one half Chinese, in case one of them won, well, his ass didn't. <laughs> there was a disqualification at the end. He pushed the other Chinese dude, and the other Chinese dude knocked his ass down. So they qualified him, but it still was an all-Asian finish. So congratulations to China for winning the gold in the 1500. The white girl that was won in the 1500 women's time trial singles was from Norway, another mm -hmm. white country with a lot of snow in it. Notice mm -hmm. we're not saying anybody from Africa or Saudi Arabia, notice that right there? Yeah, Ain't yeah, enough Asia. snow over there. So Norway wow. won that too. And also in the uh, triathlon. Yes, Carla? I was just wondering, did you have an update on the Jamaican bobsled team? The Jamaican mm -hmm. bobsled team is not in it this year. That was just for movie purposes. <laughs> they they are out. there. You know your black ass ain't finna come down here in no damn bobsled. Let's quit playing this game right here. Y'all ass was just for the movie. Once again, dominated purely by white people. Incredible. 
white people, white people, white snow, white people. That's all you're going to see on the Winter Olympics. I'll be back with another Olympic report about what white people is doing tomorrow in the snow in China. Thank you.